Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in today's video, we are going to be talking about five interior design styles you probably have never heard of. These are interior design styles that don't get a lot of love, right? These, you know, we all talk about Scandinavian and we talked about mid-century modern and traditional and art deco. Well, maybe not art deco. I talk about art deco a lot, but other people don't. But, you know, we talk a lot about these different interior design styles and they tend to see the same ones over and over again, which makes sense because they're super popular for a reason. But sometimes there's some really unique, cool interior design styles out there that we don't talk about as much. Maybe you've never heard of them. Maybe you have and you just don't know enough about them. And so that's what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to go over some of those ones that don't get all the love and we're going to break them down for you today. And maybe you can find and be inspired by some of these design styles so that you can bring some of these features into your own home. So let's get going. And before we get to those design styles, let's just take a quick minute and thank today's sponsor, which is Wayfair. So thank you Wayfair for sponsoring this video. Okay, now we all know Wayfair for their wonderful products that you can find anything on Wayfair, right? No matter what you're interior design style is there's something for everybody over on Wayfair but what you might not know is that they also have a really great YouTube channel and actually they have launched a series called A Style is Born with a fellow creator here on YouTube her name is Ariel Bassett and she has done this great series where she kind of does interior design deep dives and she's recently done a video on cottage core which she even calls a very controversial interior design style which I would agree because it's not for me uh, but I do still love learning about interior design styles even if they're not my style because I just think that's like important to be a well-rounded individual and see other perspectives. So go check out Wayfair's YouTube channel, subscribe over there, check out Ariel Bassett's video, check out the whole series of Style is Born. She's got lots going on over there and they got new videos coming down the road. And now let's get back to those five other weird, quirky, fun interior design styles that you need to know about. Okay, first interior design style that I want to talk about is Art Nouveau. Many of you commented on Art Nouveau in my Art Deco video, which makes sense. And so I thought, you know, Art Nouveau deserved a little bit of time in the sun here in this video so that we can talk a little bit more about it because I know a lot of you really really love it and yeah let me break down that style a little bit. So Art Nouveau actually originally started in France and it was really popular sort of in the late 19th century and early 20th century. Did I get that right? Yes I did. You really saw it in like 1890 just prior to the First World War and I always think when I think of iconic Art Nouveau I mean I'd go right to Paris for starters and even from there I would say those iconic sort of quintessential Parisian metro stations right? If you've ever been to Paris you know what I'm talking about. They're really unique and they've got these really beautiful curves and they don't kind of make a lot of sense. They're really interesting looking, which is very Art Nouveau. That's kind of the first thing I really want to talk about when it comes to Art Nouveau is just the organic lines. I think of Art Nouveau and I think of it such a, a nod to nature and sort of recognizing the beauty in nature, especially in shape. You know, we talk about beauty in nature in terms of materials a lot, which is good, myself included, and that makes sense. But we only talk about it in shape and form, and I think that's a mistake because when you look at Art Nouveau, it's really just shows off how beautiful natural curves and lines can be. So when you think of like, say you got this beautiful staircase, you know, this like gorgeous banister or something coming down in an Art Nouveau style, it doesn't work in a straight line because nature doesn't work in a straight line. So these banisters have just these gorgeous curves that come down. They're really organic in shape. You know, they're not a straight line. and I I think that's really beautiful. And that's kind of makes sense because it's mimicking what happens in nature, right? It doesn't work in a straight line. Rivers don't work in a straight line. And I think that really is exemplified in a lot of the architectural details that come through in Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau also really showcased a lot of floral patterns, curves, sort of elegant silhouettes amongst their other characteristics. And we really saw that come through in things like furniture, as well as the architecture that you saw in these beautiful spaces, fine art, of course, and then pottery and glassware too. So in addition to the curves in the those organic lines. It's also really important that you kind of understand that there's a lot of like florals, again, that sort of nod to nature, as well as different animals, like, you know, pretty little birds and also really kind of whimsical creatures as well, which is kind of interesting, like fairies and things like that, that you see a lot in Art Nouveau. And I don't want to get caught up in the whole like masculine sort of feminine dichotomy, because a lot of that's just kind of a load of BS. But I will say, if you are going to use that, Art Nouveau, to me at least, sort of feels a little bit more of a feminine design style. It's just got a lot of of sort of really interesting curves and a lot of florals, a lot of things that, you know, feminine imagery that people are really used to seeing. Now you contrast that by the way with Art Deco, which, you know, as I mentioned, people brought up you know, Art Nouveau when discussing Art Deco and the two are very confused, which they shouldn't be because they are very, very different. But Art Deco, meanwhile, feels a lot more masculine because it's a lot of humans conquering nature as opposed to the celebration of nature and organic forms, which is what you see a lot more in Art Nouveau. So Art Deco on the flip side, 
uses a lot more geometrics, harsh lines, straight lines, and rarely sort of moves into the sort of organic free flowing shapes that you see in Art Nouveau. Those are some of the big differences between the two. And that makes sense because a lot of these design styles in the historical context are sort of moving like a pendulum back and forth between the two. So Art Deco is definitely a response to Art Nouveau because in Art Nouveau, you just see a lot of those really beautiful sort of florals and curves and things like that. So some common things that you'll find in Art Nouveau that you may want to incorporate in your own home if you so choose would be things like wood paneling, long and windy curves, different sort of beautiful patterned wall paintings or wall coverings, right? You see a lot of wallpaper in the form of say little pretty birds or animals or nymphs or dragonflies or things like that. You also see a lot of like colored light and stained glass windows in things like door panels as well as skylights and of course lampshades as well. Okay, so let's go from the very, very old style of Art Nouveau and move into a much newer style, which is really an interpretation of many styles that have come before, and that is Coastal Grandmother. So we are going to give some time of day to this new interior design style that a lot of people are talking about. I feel like people, I see a lot in magazines and popping up on social media and stuff, the Coastal Grandmother style. So let's talk about it here because you may not have heard of it yet, but if you haven't yet, well, here you go. You're going to hear about it here and you'll probably now see it other places as well. So the Coastal Grandmother style, this very much is an extension of coastal and to me sort of feels like coastal but brought in and sort of massaged with the style of you know grand millennial or a lot of this sort of nod to this new traditional that we've also seen prevalent in other styles so i think i personally see this as sort of an updated or a mishmash of those two different styles where you sort of see the typical coastal which can you know we all know kind of more or less what that looks like i would think you see a lot of like beautiful light blues you see a lot of creams and whites and things like that but while coastal isn't necessarily always going to have traditional pieces and traditional furniture, definitely coastal grandmother, you're going to see a lot more incorporating in some of those more traditional elements. So a lot of that fine detailing, a lot of those vintage pieces, you're going to see that sort of combined and brought together into one. So, you know, I'm thinking like Diane Lane, I'm going to like Grace and Frankie in that beautiful beach house. Oh, I missed that show. Is that show done? I think we, I think we finished that show. Oh, that was a good one. Anyway, you know, you know what I'm thinking? Like Grace and Frankie, we're on the seaside here. We're thinking like kind of those Nancy Myers films, right? You've got like something's got to give. You've got the holiday, stuff like that, right? We've got this sort of chic coastal sort of California vibe going on here. You know, you've got maybe some beautiful little seashells in a glass jar, just sort of sitting off to the side casually. You've got fresh flowers, of course, in a little vintage vase sitting in the corner or right there, right in the center of a, a dining table. You've got some nautical artwork that you might use as well as a vintage rug, lots of wovens, things like baskets and lots of textural elements as well, like little blankets and stuff that just sort of soften a lot of texture into the space. But again, I think unlike your typical coastal space that we've seen before, this one feels a little bit more vintage and a little bit more of a nod to some of the traditional elements that we've seen in the past. So take Grand Millennial, you know, take your coastal, chuck them together and boom, we've got the coastal grandmother look. That chic California grandmother look that, I don't know, Anne Hathaway has been rocking for a few years now, good for her and now you can too. Okay, and then let's talk about the next interior design style you might not have heard of, which is near and dear to my heart because it's where I'm from here in Vancouver, uh, which is sometimes called Pacific Northwest, sometimes called Northwestern, and sometimes called West Coast, but basically this area of the world, we're gonna call it the Pacific Northwest style. So this is an interesting design style that is really born out of the beauty of the Pacific Northwest, but also, you know, it's a style that feels a little bit rustic, while also feeling quite modern. And I think that's what makes it sort of a really unique style. It features really big, expansive glass windows. It does this for several reasons. I think first of all is to let in a lot of natural light because we are fairly far north and thus sometimes, you know, there's not as much light coming through, natural light in the winter time. So a lot of that is to sort of coax in as much light as we can, especially since it gets quite rainy around here, as well as it's very green and very sort of kind of showcasing that lush natural beauty that you see here in the Pacific Northwest. I think what's really sets this particular style apart is sort of the materials used because the Pacific Northwest is known for its natural beauty. I think there's a lot of materials specific that make sense for this period. You see a lot of glass, again, to really sort of highlight the outdoor beauty that you want to show off, as well as things like concrete, as well as cedar. And so cedar is a very common wood 
wood that you see a lot used in this style. You see cedar soffits used a lot in the exterior of the home. You might see cedar beams that are used a lot in the home as well as of course across the ceiling. I think the reddish undertone as well that is used in a lot of those cedar posts definitely makes this style lean into those earth tones. This style is all about showcasing off the natural materials that make sense for this period. Typically the exterior of the home is oftentimes going to be either a shed roof or going to be a modern flat roof. So I find this specific Northwest style is a really interesting combination of sort of a very contemporary roof line, very contemporary features, while also feeling very rustic and natural because it wants to use those materials that are so common in this region. Lines and furniture in this design style is usually really clean and simple. I think what's also really interesting about this style is that it sort of feels a little Scandinavian in terms of, you know, the big bright windows that are letting in all that natural light, as well as those really clean, simple lines. But it also kind of borrows a lot from that Japanese Zen style of using a lot of earth tones and a little bit more of those darker toned woods, which I think really makes this style quite unique. And of course, the other thing too is there's also a lot of First Nations and Aboriginal art that can be used in this style as sort of a celebration for the First Nations that are here in this area. And so you can definitely see that also being influenced into this style, which is just a really interesting combination of rooted in tradition while also really celebrating the beauty of this area. So it also feels really contemporary in terms of the materials that are used as well as the shape and form of some of the furniture pieces. Okay, next interior design style that we don't talk about enough is going to be French country. So French country is beautiful to me because it never feels stuffy or ostentatious, but it's just this really interesting blend of elegance while also feeling really almost rustic and yet approachable at the same time. So there's a couple of things that really make this style quite unique. So this style features a lot of like softly patterned fabrics in really muted colors. You're not gonna see any really bold kind of crazy kooky colors here. Most of the things are just in really soft and subtle pastels, as well as you see a lot of distressed, painted, or even vintage furnishings and accessories being brought in, and you see lots of wood and natural materials. So I do think people really love this style because it feels very elegant. It has a lot of sort of interesting detailed work usually used. It sort of has like a lot of sort of vintage pieces that are brought in that kind of really add to a sense of story in the space, make it feel sort of really charming, but it still has sort of a sense of feeling a little bit informal, right? And I think that's sometimes what a lot of people really want. They want their style to feel really beautiful and they want it to feel elegant, but they never want it to feel stuffy. Some other interior design styles can feel really off-putting and not like a home that people can actually live in. This style feels very comfortable, really beautiful and elegant, but also one that feels like a home. And I think that was what makes French country really, really popular. So it doesn't feel like you're living in the Palace of Versailles because that isn't practical for most people, but it just feels really homey. There's something about this space that just feels really comfortable. There's some traditional elements that are involved there that just feel really comfortable and safe while also, you know, still feeling a little bit more elegant than, you know, putting in some cheesy signs, for example, but it still has some just enough touch of traditional to make it still feel quite elegant. So I think it's that combination of elegance and comfort and informality that really sets this style apart. So that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm gonna link here to a playlist on interior design styles because I have done so many different interior design styles. And if you really love this type of content and learning about different interior design styles, then I recommend you check out that playlist and you can just have at it because you'll be there for a while watching a whole bunch of videos. Enjoy, and I will see you all in those videos. Thanks, bye.